Intel finally gets some money from the CHIPS Act. Now, I want everyone to remember when this CHIPS Act actually came into uh, to play. It was approved in 23? No, it was in 2022. So you want the government to drive the future of innovation. Look how fast they move. Now, just remember, when they actually approved this, nobody was using ChatGPT yet. By the way, so, look who started it, too. It wasn't even under this administration. No, no. It's, it's brutal how slow this stuff pro proliferates and progresses. The good news is it happened. The bad news is it's not enough. And by the way, this was a big part of the Pat Gelsinger discussion. I think they gave him about eight and a half billion in grants, another 11 billion in loans. And, you know, based on the way we're running up our national, our, our global debt in the U.S., it was a trillion a quarter now that we're creating in debt. It feels like 52 billion is not enough money for the most important technological revolution on the planet in the U.S.'s ability to uh, substantiate, legitimize, and protect its long-term interests. Now, having said that, this will go a long way to getting um, Intel superfabs off the ground. We will need somewhere in the U.S., somewhere in the West, to be able to produce all these XPUs, to be able to produce all these GPUs, to be able to... And Intel is a viable option for this. It's a... I, Pat, I've been on the record for a while. I've said the foundry business might be the most interesting business that Intel has. That's not to say the other parts of the business aren't interesting. I'm just saying that right now with this AI growth, TSMC cannot take 100% of this on. I'm sorry, it will not happen. Um, Pat, I, I I don't feel like it was optimal, though. I don't feel like what they got was really what they had hoped for or what they wanted. I feel like this was a little bit, there were some concessions here. Uh, 11 billion of loans versus, you know, 20 billion, including grants, felt like a bit of a kick in the teeth for the company that has raised its hand, stepped up and said, we will be the company that will bring manufacturing at the leading edge from, from a U.S. domestic company back. And now you are also hearing about Samsung getting money, TSMC getting money. Lots of non-U.S. based companies are seemingly lined up to get dollars here. And that's okay. Those are our partners and allies. But having said that, I don't know that we're solving as much of the problem as we need. And, and again, I go back and say there is no way in heck that 52, 53, whatever it was, 52, $3 billion is enough if we want to maintain global leadership in technology and the way we spend money on other things, wars and other things that do not apply to us, it just absolutely blows my mind that we are not spending more money to make sure we lead in the most important technological revolution that will drive national security, technology leadership and supply chain resilience around the world. I'm gonna hit, just do some really quick hits here. Uh, I was asked by a uh, press, who, who's the loser here? And the loser is TSMC. TSMC will get money, but based on the fact that TSMC isn't going to bring their best Arizona A and B, uh, their chairman and senior seven, executives. Right? They're only bringing seven. Uh, their chairman and chief executives are calling uh, U.S. workers lazy, uh, which by the way, even if it were true, you, you, you know, don't have one hand and then slap somebody across the face. But uh, some even historical stuff is coming out from TSMC and the way that they've uh, talked about other cultures and companies. Uh, and by the way, it's driving uh, US-based semiconductor companies crazy at, at how TSMC, they, they pull, executives pull me aside and tell them how disappointed they are in uh, in the way that TSMC is is, is, is operating here. Uh, the other question I get is, is this enough? And the short answer is no. There will need to be a CHIPS Act 2 and a CHIPS Act 3 uh, until we get to some form of automation and replication to build uh, these foundries. Congratulations to Intel. By the way, I was one of the only analysts three years ago that gave Intel a chance. If I got a dollar for every person who said, who came along and said that uh, they should divest I said, you are completely freaking crazy because Intel is not ready to do that. Maybe when they get uh, off there, um, they get lift off with 18A and they've got Columbus uh, up and running, then you might be able to do that. But now, dumb. Hey, I just want to say that there was another analyst that gave them a chance that actually has written the bull case, has taken a lot of shit, a lot of flack from people. Um, a lot of beep. God, should we beep that out? Never mind. Let's just keep going. Well, I, I, like this I want this pod to be authentic, Pat Moorhead. 
beep. We said it. We we stick by it. We get it right a lot more than we get it wrong. We aren't going to say we never get it wrong. We'll just never remind you that we got it wrong. You're going to have to find that stuff yourself.